my pleasure to tell you a little more about wind research and what's going on in the, the company at the moment. I would like to start by telling you a little about what I'm going to talk <laughs> about. And what, what I will uh, discuss today is our uh, drug candidate, FOXY5, which is, to the best of our knowledge, a, a unique molecule, meaning that we don't really have any competition in, in this mechanism. And uh, the phase two uh, program that we have now for uh, colon cancer. Uh, this is a molecule with the potential of actually uh, preventing the spread of uh, cancer. And uh, I also think it's fair to say that it has potential to do uh, some more uh, things that I'll talk about uh, more later on. Anyway, uh, there's a huge unmet medical need in stage 3 colon cancer, and the uh, uh, commercial opportunity is, uh, of course, very substantial. Now, the important thing here is that last summer we performed an ad hoc analysis because of some signs that uh, our co-workers and clinicians out there had made in these patients. And uh, it seemed like uh, we actually saw something I in this study, meaning that uh, while the patients receiving active substance uh, were downstaged compared to, to the control. Moreover, it seems like uh, FOXY5 has a very, very uh, favorable side effect profile, which of course is very, very important. And what we've done now is that we have revised the study design and um, the, uh, primarily uh, the dosing strategy in colon cancers, hoping that, uh, that by doing that we could enhance patient ad ad outcomes. Also, and what is very important, is that we have lots of scientific evidence that this mechanism actually could be of value also in other uh, cancer form, meaning that we have the potential here for what we could call a pipeline in a molecule. Anyway, I don't think uh, this uh, is news uh, to the audience here, but uh, we're all aware of that uh, colon cancer is a huge medical a uh, problem out there. It's one of the four most uh, common cancers actually in the world. And uh, although early stage colon cancer usually has a very, very favorable uh, outcome or uh, um, survival, uh, this drops quite drastically if metastases are formed. You can see here that uh, when the tumor is in, is in the regional state, uh, five-year survival is over 70%, and that drops to 14% if it has reached the metastatic uh, stage. So if that is something that we could prevent, it would be a great benefit uh, to patients. Um, well, uh, here you see some numbers. Uh, the uh, global colon cancer incidence is estimated to be uh, north of 1 million per year. And of those, some uh, 140,000 uh, are in stage 3. And the potential sales for uh, something that actually provides what I call clinically meaningful differentiation to these patients would be uh, north of, or I would say way north of, uh, 500 million. Uh, dollars per year in peak sales. Now, this is the most important slide that I'm going to show uh, you today, and I'm the one that I'm going to spend the most time on. And this is uh, what we, the observations we made in the uh, ad hoc analysis that we made uh, last summer. Um, what we did was that the treatment uh, we, with the substance, it starts at the stage when the patient uh, has been diagnosed with the disease, which is done by uh, CT or e imaging. And then what the, uh, the clinicians are looking at is, well, the, the tumor itself, the, the mother tumor, so to say, the primary tumor. And they also look at how it has spread in the local lymph nodes or more distally. And what we saw then, uh, uh, then after the patients had undergone surgery, 
which is like two to three weeks after this initial staging, was that uh, the patients that had received active uh, compound actually had a lower stage than those uh, uh, than the controlled patients, and this was a. Uh, um, Analysis performed, we had, I think, about 110 patients, so 55 patients in each group. So it's a significant number of uh, patients. And this, of course, made us very, very excited. And it made us rethink a little how we wanted to uh, uh, do the study. And we had to reconsider if the initial design of the phase two wa was optimal and we came to the conclusion that it was not. As I pointed out early in the presentation, uh, this molecule seems to have a very, very beneficial uh, side effect profile. So we thought that uh, perhaps we, we should increase the dose. And in the uh, amendment uh, to this phase two study, uh, we're increasing the dose. And this first now, um, uh, Oops, the first cohort, we had the uh, first patient in uh, last week. And uh, we are very optimistic that uh, this is something that will run on time, so to say. You know, making clinical trials meet, meet, meet timelines is, as you all know, uh, very, very challenging. And then uh, when we finished the first cohort, we switched to cohort two with an even higher dose. And then uh, the idea is that we use that information from these uh, first two cohorts to select a dose uh, for step two in, in this amended uh, study. And what we're going to do is to, to, there to, to analyze 80 patients. So, uh, so far, uh, the study, the amended uh, study has gone quite well. As you see here, uh, first patient uh, have just, uh, well, been included and we hope to, to get results during uh, 2025. As I pointed out, uh, we believe that we have the potential here for uh, a pipeline in a molecule. As you can see here, uh, there are some uh, examples of different cancer forms where um, uh, WINT5A, uh, uh, which is actually the sort of the mechanism here, I won't dwell too long on that, but where it has been uh, uh, implicated. And as you can see, there are numerous of very, very uh, uh, prevalent uh, or common uh, cancer forms where this molecule uh, uh, could have a benefit. Now, you can always ask the question, uh, did we choose the right indication when we picked colon cancer? So far, it seems like it, because it's in uh, colon cancer that we have seen these first signals here. So we're quite optimistic about that. Uh, now, um, patent is, of course, very, very important in this case. This molecule has been around for some time, but uh, with new uh, patents for the staple com uh, compositions, we believe that we have patent protection until 2041, and that is, of course, very, very uh, important for us. Now, we're pleased to say that we have a a uh, talented and very experienced uh, team running uh, the show here. And I'll show you some of, of the members here. We also have a very diverse and experienced board of directors and, oops. Uh -huh. Compu oops. Uh, with uh, Tommy Anderson here who happens to be a professor of medicine in, in, in the beautiful city of Lund. He, he's the brain behind this, and he's been uh, with the board ever since the inception of the company. And then on top of that, we have uh, several key opinion leaders so in, in our uh, as scientific advisors, too, as so we are very uh, excited about. And with that, I would like to end. Thank you. Thank you, Christoph.
we've had a couple of questions here about the, the study. Hmm? So you're trying to find the right right dose for the phase two study. Yep. How how high can you go? <laughs> and do you think the effect will get better with higher doses? Well, uh, I don't know. We have uh, the pleasure of having our CEO here as well. Uh, exactly. We higher have is usually here. better. Mm? Let's Welcome, Vanilla. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, based on the preclinical studies and uh, the clinical studies we have done, we, uh, we increase the dose and typically what you do is you double and you double and you double again. And this is the steps that we have outlined in the protocol, uh, but we have not revealed the doses, but, um, but it has been approved. And the steps that one can take is uh, defined in the protocol and there's not going to be a long run how you evaluate. So there is a committee that will evaluate uh, and then we can immediately go into the next cohort and then we can immediately also go into the selected dose later on. So everything of that is approved by the authorities. And as you're here, Pernilla, I think we have to address the fact that you have uh, actually resigned as the CEO. Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can answer that question. It's not unusual that people change jobs. I mean, it happens all the time. I've done it myself on numerous occasions. Uh, so nothing strange with, with that. And we're in the process now of finding a new and very capable uh, replacement for Panilla, even though we will uh, miss her dearly. Um, so we hope to have someone on board relatively soon. But until then, uh, you know, Panilla will stay until uh, a new one arrives. But as I pointed out, we have a very good, strong and talented uh, team under Pernilla, who is highly capable of running the show. What are you looking for in a new CEO? What we're looking for? Oh my God, we're looking for everything. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, we, what we're looking for is uh, someone, a, st a strong leader with, with the competence and experience in this field, with the you know, ability to run clinical trials, and also very, very importantly, uh, being able to establish collaborations. Because we realize, of course, we're a small company and we can't take this all, all the way. So it's a number one priority for us to establish uh, collaborations with farmers out there. And this is something we're working on very, very hard now, and we have uh, lots of ongoing discussions. So we, it's a very exciting stage uh, we're in at the moment. Returning to, to the more clinical yeah. side of things, you recently announced a, a patent on a new salt formulation of FOXY5. Why have this, this formulation been developed? I think it's important to always continue with your formulation, with your substance. You know, it's a long development. So ensuring that we have a long patent protection from the substance. So when the substance patent expires, then you have to build a use patent around that, like a patent thicket. So try to find smart ways of prolong. Um, that's actually the reason behind it. And I think it's very, very good to have 2041 now. So can we, expect, can we expect more formulations and more patents to, to further strengthen the protection? Well, we need to build on, on this new one now, and then that's, that's going to be the foundation moving forward. Mm. And this, we have some questions on, on finances, of course, uh, mm. that the study is estimated to, to end in 2025. Mm. And uh, according to the the question posed so here, the funding seems to, to last you up to mid-2024. So what are your plans in terms of financing the company? Oh, well, that's always a challenge, of course, and especially for, for, for a molecule uh, at this stage. I think that uh, that's something we need to come back uh, to, but uh, financing is challenging. But on the other hand, you know, we're in a situation here where we, uh, we're working with an entirely new mechanism. And to the best of our knowledge, we don't have any competition. And thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, we have some very promising sign that this actually could bring be benefit to patients out there. And these three things is you are usually very good combinations. So I'm cautiously optimistic. Well, that's a, a nice note to end mm. you on. Thank you so much, Christo and Penilla. Mm. Thank you. Thank you.